Welcome, let's begin with the 10th chapter of class 7 science. Here we would be talking about respiration and organisms. Again, we have some of the brain teaser questions for you. I hope if you are able to answer these questions prior to the video, that's well and good. If not, after the video, you would be surely able to answer these questions. So let's understand and begin with the two processes, breathing and respiration. Breathing, I can say simply is inhalation and exhalation of the air. So taking in and throwing out the air is what is breathing. However, respiration is a much broader concept which incorporates the concept of breathing in it. Let's say if I am running into a park or a garden, what would happen? Over the time, I would see my rate of heartbeat or my rate of breathing both of those would become much more faster actually why do you think this happens so this happens because of the process of cellular respiration as you move forward your body tends to have more oxygen that's being required for the process if it's not able to fulfill that the glucose that's being burned out converts into lactic acid and this is the reason for the muscle cramps to occur. We'll understand that in more detail as we move forward in this lecture. Understanding the concept of a organismic system, we can say at the lowermost layer, we further have the breakdown of the cell. But for now, we can say cell is the basic functional unit that an organism has. These cells which are of the same type and perform similar per uh, functions are grouped up into tissues. So these cells have a function of what is known as cellular respiration. Through this cellular respiration, the oxygen in the air that's present helps us to break down what? It helps us to break down the food. Now very very important, why does this respiration process involve food? Because we are talking about breakdown of the food, when this food is breaking down in presence of oxygen, you have carbon dioxide that is released, you have water that is released and energy that is released. The energy that is released would help the cell to function and would help in the process of respiration. So this energy component becomes very very important. There are two processes that occur. One is with the presence of oxygen and one is with the absence of oxygen. The one with the presence of oxygen is known as aerobic. The one in the absence of oxygen is known as anaerobic. How does we understand the anaerobic respiration? Anaerobic respiration takes place, a good example is yeast. What would happen in the yeast? There is glucose that again tends to break down in the absence of oxygen. Without oxygen, it would break down into alcohol. And since it's breaking down in the, uh, into alcohol, this yeast, because of the yeast, let's say you have a batter for dosa or any other preparation, you have a batter. This dough would rise, that's because of the presence of carbon dioxide. And again, this would smell. Why it would smell? This would smell because of the presence of alcohol in it. So both of the things are there. So yeast basically is a good example to understand the anaerobic respiration where I can say this glucose would break down into alcohol, water and release energy. Similarly, our muscles also respire. We talked about cells that respire. So muscles also respire. If you have to do some of the labor that's very, very quick and requires a lot of energy. This muscle would function at a very fast rate. As a result, there would be deficiency of oxygen. Since there is deficiency of oxygen, you would have the breakdown of glucose that would take place into lactic acid. And as a result, there would be accumulation of lactic acid in the muscles leading to muscular cramps as we said. A good way to treat the muscular cramps is taking a hot water bath or doing a massage. So this improves the circulation of the blood and increases the oxygen supply in the body. This deficiency of oxygen can occur if you are running very fast, if you are cycling, which you usually do not do, if you are walking, weightlifting. So some of those are the classic examples to understand this process of uh, basically 
द डिफिशियंसी ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इन मसल विच लीड टू मस्कुलर क्रैम्स द नेक्स्ट इज ब्रीदिंग एज आई सेड द प्रोसेस ऑफ टेकिंग इन ऑफ एयर इज वॉट इज नोन एज इन सो यू हैव एंट्री एंड एग्जिट सो गोइंग इन और आउट दैट्स अदर वर्ड्स यू कैन रिमेंबर सो लेट्स टेक एग्जिट हियर एंड इन हियर सो यू हैव इनहेलेशन दैट इज टेकिंग इन ऑफ एयर एंड एग्जिट सो ई एक्स सो यू हैव एक्सलेशन दैट्स थ्रोइंग आउट ऑफ द एयर सो इन एंड एग्जिट आर द वर्ड्स दैट वी वुड रिमेंबर now this is a process that takes continuously throughout the life so as far as you are alive there is a subconscious process that goes on for breathing you do not think sit and think for a while okay today now i'll breathe for 5 minutes and then start with my work it's a continuous process that occurs throughout day and night the speed varies in night when you are sleeping the rate of breathing decreases so it slows down this process of breathing as i said includes inhalation plus exhalation the rate of breathing varies if you are doing a, a vigorous exercise then a strenuous exercise this rate of breathing would increase so number of times a person takes in breathes in and breathes out in a minute is what is the rate of breathing when you are trying to breathe much more faster when you are doing a strenuous exercise this rate would increase you would have more supply of breaking of food that is required and more energy would be released on an average we say that when you are resting you have 15 to 18 times a minute that you are breathing however during a heavy exercise it's up to 25 times a minute during exercise as we said we take deep breath we work at a faster pace so there is more inhalation of oxygen that takes place how does this process takes place in the body through the nostrils which are the holes in the nose you have the air that goes in now this region has uh, small small fine hairs what's the function this these hairs remove any kind of uh, unnecessary dust particles that are present into the atmosphere from going into the system so you have the air that goes through the nostrils into the nasal cavity from the nasal cavity into the windpipe and finally into the lungs these lungs are present in the chest cavity this chest cavity is surrounded by the rib cage now this rib cage has the lower layer which is known as diaphragm so this muscular diaphragm determines the cavity or the amount of air that could be hold uh, in the lungs so this is the layer that ultimately determines the amount of air that could be inhaled and is exhaled so we would understand how this diaphragm works in a while when you are breathing the chest and the diaphragm perform specific actions so what would happen i have a good demonstration here so when you have two balloons that are there which are tied to a stopper and you have a rubber sheet on the bottom what would happen over the time over the time as you would have this rubber sheet that you are trying to pull down you would have the balloons that would inflate however when you are pushing up the balloons the rubber sheet the balloons would deflate how does this happen during the process of inhalation you have the air that moves in since the air is moving in the amount of air that's present in the lungs would increase so ribs basically move outward and diaphragm moves downward so when the ribs are moving outwards the lungs are moving the ribs basically in which you have the lungs that are enclosed are moving outwards and the diaphragm moving downwards you have more capacity for the air to be hold however when you are exhaling this diaphragm pushes up and the ribs basically moves in and down so you have the capacity that is reduced so from this bigger capacity i have a smaller capacity that's reached and now you have the answer for your previous question that was on the brain teaser i repeat again a very very important concept to understand you have lungs which are connected through the windpipe now these lungs are present in the chest cavity below the lungs you have diaphragm when i'm inhaling i'm taking in a lot of air so when i'm taking in air i need this lungs to hold the same amount of air that's coming in 
So what I would do is this diaphragm would automatically involuntarily move down and the ribs would move outwards and upwards. As a result, my capacity to hold would increase. However, on the other hand, when I am throwing out the air, my diaphragm would go up and the ribs would go inside and downwards. As a result, you would have a decreased capacity that would be witnessed. So very, very important experiment to understand. You might have seen sometime that or if not, you can try it now. Just go and exhale on the mirror. When you are exhaling on the mirror or throwing air onto the mirror, you would see small droplets that are accumulated onto the mirror surface. That's because of the moisture that is present in the air that you are trying to breathe out. So moisture is again an essential part of the air that's there. Sometimes we have heard because of the increased level of pollution, you have a uh, respiratory diseases that are coming up, for example, asthma. So you have pranic yoga or pranayam that's considered as an alternate therapy to increase the capacity of the lungs. And once the capacity of lungs is increased, more amount of uh, energy could be supplied or more amount of oxygen could be supplied to the whole body and a better functioning or better results could be obtained. Very interesting fact is we are inhaling air and exhaling air. Both the inhaled and the exhaled air contains oxygen and carbon dioxide. It's not that the air that we are exhaling is only carbon dioxide and the air that, sorry, is uh, basically the air we are inhaling is only pure oxygen. It's not that case. So when we are inhaling, it's 21% of oxygen and 0.04% of carbon dioxide that's there. However, when we are throwing out the air, you have 16.4% oxygen that you are throwing out and around 4.4% carbon dioxide that's going out. So if you have a lime water that's there and you try to blow in air into that, after some time you would see bubbles and this lime water would turn milky. Why does that occur? That occurs because the exhaled air has carbon dioxide and this slime reacts with carbon dioxide to turn into a milky solution. So very, very important concept to understand. Similarly, there are two good examples. One is an example of a cold morning and the other is an example of yawning. What happens during the process of yawning? When you are drowsy, when you are very, very tired, what would happen? Your breathing rate would slowly and gradually decrease. As a result, their lungs would not have sufficient amount of oxygen and they would have to work harder to obtain that oxygen. To bring that extra oxygen in, the person starts to yawn. So that's how we understand the concept of yawning. The next is an example of cold morning. If you are blowing out air in a cold morning, you would observe that it's similar to the smoke coming out from your mouth. However, this smoke that's coming out is warmer. It's much more moist. So this moist air that's coming out condenses, forms small, small particles that is there. And it looks like a white smoke that is present into the atmosphere. So those two are good examples to understand the importance of oxygen that's there. The higher order organisms, which we say mammals, basically have lungs for breathing. So whales are considered as mammals and they have lungs. However, fishes on the other hand have gills. So there are different organisms which have different mechanisms for breathing. Let's move on to those organisms one by one. Cockroach, for example, has spiracles. Very important concept, where are these spiracles located? These spiracles are located on the side of the body. However, when we talk about plants, plants have stomata. These stomata are located on the lower side of the leaf. So stomata on the lower side of the leaves, spiracles on the side of the body. Through these spiracles, there is the network of trachea or air tubules that are reached and you have exchange of gases that takes place. So oxygen rich air gushes in and carbon dioxide rich air goes out, which occurs as a simple phenomena. The next is earthworms. Earthworms breathe through skin. So they have moist and slimy skin because of which they can uh, exchange air 
Frogs have a pair of lungs. They can breathe through skin also because it's moist and slippery. However, the tadpoles have gills. Similarly, fishes have gills. What are gills? Gills are simply the projections of the skin. So you have this skin and small projections of these skins could be seen as gills. Through these gills, you have blood vessels that exchange the gases through the atmosphere. And finally, in the plants, as we already talked about, you have leaves. On the lower side, you have stomata. Stomata are more in number than the spiracles. And through this stomata, you have exchange in the gases that takes place. However, it's believed that oxygen is important for respiration. But if we are inhaling pure oxygen constantly, it's even dangerous. For some of the organisms, also we can say inhalation of oxygen is toxic. For us, it is important that we have oxygen in certain amount. But for other organisms, it can prove to be fatal. We have a good example here. Three jars are there. In the first jar, as you can see, there is a plant and the mice. In the last star, you only have mice. What would happen? These mice would exhale. So you would have more amount of carbon dioxide that would be there in the last jar. However, this first jar, you would have carbon dioxide that would be there. But this carbon dioxide, which is released by the mice, would be used by the plant through the process of photosynthesis. And this would release oxygen. So least amount of carbon dioxide would be seen in the first jar. Maximum amount of carbon dioxide would be seen in the last jar. And this first jar you have minimum amount that is due to the presence of the process of photosynthesis. Since you have green plant that's present in the first jar, you would have a process of photosynthesis and the carbon dioxide that's been exhaled by the mice would be used by the plant that's present there. The example of dough we already talked about. So dough basically usually has yeast. This yeast uh, rises because of the presence of fermentation and uh, the carbon dioxide that's present. The smell is due to the formation of the alcohol. And you also have sugar which is added to this dough. Why is this sugar added? This sugar is the food for the yeast. So once yeast has the food, this glucose breaks down. So what breaks down is glucose as we have understood initially in this chapter. So in the absence of oxygen, this glucose break down into the alcohol. And how does this glucose form? Because of the sugar. So sugar basically acts as a food for the yeast. At very low temperature, the activity slows down and the uh, dough formation activity or the rise in the dough declines. However, if the temperature is very high, it would become sore. So those are the things that are taken into consideration. I hope by now you are able to solve all the brain teasers that we had in the starting. So we could have more from the lesson. So stay tuned for many further updates in science. Have a very great day ahead.